I started cutting in seventh grade, and then everything else pretty much followed after that. Drinking, drugs, sex, things like that. They just kind of all came shortly after that. Like, nobody else felt the way that I felt, and y you tend to want to, like, push everything away when that happens. You want to be by yourself because that's the way you feel like you already are. She uh, had repeated her freshman year and was on track to repeat it a second time. And I think if we hadn't have been so vocal and so assertive, she would have dropped out. I would have dropped out. She would have dropped out. Undoubtedly. I love to swim. I will never stop swimming. I'm a really strong swimmer. Um, I have a love for the water because when I was very ill, and I have schizophrenia, so when I was ill, the only real way to drown out the voices was to go underwater. So I just, I grew to love it. And I remember when they were so loud that I'd swim to the bottom of the pool and then hold my breath for as long as I could just to get those 30, 40 seconds of peace. I hid under my desk because my desk was against the wall. So I'd put my cha two, like two chairs in front of it. Um, under the desk, I would probably go in there for about, I think a half hour usually. I was so scared. If all, just about all the people that I know and love were standing like right there, I'd feel comfortable and I'd come out. When he was about seven, his dad and I told him that we were getting divorced and that we would be moving. He was already being redistricted for school to a new school. And then the following Tuesday was September 11th. And it just was way too much for one little body at one time. I pretty much exploded. Um, it's my last year's teacher, Ms. Tartza. She really helped me a lot. They talked things over with me first. Um, what I'm going to do instead of flipping out or what they need to do to calm me down. And it doesn't matter if it's a good event, bad event, anything he's anxious about can make him really tense and hyper-reactive to things. So he's at a point now where he knows when that's coming. And even up to a couple of days beforehand, he'll say, I think it's time to build a nest. And he'll put together kind of a nest either in his bunk or halfway into my closet of blankets and pillows and stuffed animals and kind of self-soothe that way. Paul Kaluga teaches children with emotional and behavioral disorders at the Haverhill Alternative School in Massachusetts. He gains the trust of students such as Shannon through his warmth and dynamic teaching methods for troubled children. Paul is a member of CCBD. Paul came into a uh, master's program that was based on CCBD standards that uh, elevated effective practices, many of which that are endorsed by CCBD. So he's already helped even before he gets there in terms of having a, um, a program uh, that's high quality and high support for him. I feel that I, I do a good job with these students because I know where they're coming from. They need someone to care. I've been teaching for 23 years. I've dealt mainly with um, kids and students uh, with a lot of problems, a lot of social issues, aggression issues. I began my career as a student teacher in 1980 uh, in an alternative high school. Uh, I went back to grad school, um, got certified in special ed, and Dr. Muscott took me a level higher. He taught me that there are ways to be successful with these students and to um, pass on my success to them 
in a way of role modeling because most of these students do not have good role models. Shannon is, is a success story as are a few other students here at this school. I didn't even think I was going to graduate when I went to Cable High. And now I've made up all the time that I've missed. I stayed back a year and a half. I missed a school. And I made it up and I'm graduating when I'm supposed to with college credit. She's not just a number in my book. She's not just another person going through my classes who's going to graduate and I won't see him anymore. Um, because I don't think that that will ever happen. He's, he's more real. Like, he, he doesn't beat around the bush about things. He'll tell you the way things really are. Whenever I have, like, a problem or, like, a flashback or anything like that, he makes time for it. He actually cares about it. There are a lot of good teachers in public school system, but I think there, a lot of them are under a lot of pressure to teach to certain tests, and they have to gear their curriculum to that, and a lot hinges on that. And unfortunately, a lot of kids who don't fall into that pattern are going to fall through the cracks. For every success like Shannon's, there are scores of children who lack the resources they need. CCBD works throughout North America to respond to the needs of students such as Shannon by helping to provide them with motivated and knowledgeable staff. I think the first was to recognize that, or to learn, that what was happening wasn't so much that this was a child that was out of control and that just needed better discipline and, and there would be no problems. And always we found that it is never one item that's the solution or the support. It is a combination of things like medication and school support and therapy and some behavior modification. And this one teacher gave me some advice and it was that the very behavior that you see now that is so challenging and so hard do the best you can not to destroy the spirit that she has because that very spirit may one day be just what keeps her going and just what makes her be the kind of person that she can be. The various supports that Emily has had along the years are what has gotten her to where she is now. I wish people could see the really sick Emily so that they could fully appreciate where she was and how far she has come. Through hard work and loving support, Emily is making great progress. She now attends both public and alternative schools and can manage the responsibilities of working at her local video store. Children with behavior disorders work twice as hard to make it through each day. With the right interventions, they too can lead successful lives at home, at school, and in the community but they cannot do it alone. That's where the CCBD Foundation comes in. For more than 40 years, CCBD has helped replace the label bad kids with an understanding that these children have disorders that are legitimate and treatable. I was chosen to be the spokesperson for the Council for Children with Behavioral Disorders Foundation. I'm proof that a troubled childhood can be overcome. CCBD is a respected leader in the field of education. They promote the most effective, scientifically-based approaches to address behavioral problems. In communities throughout the United States and Canada, CCBD members are working to make life better for children and their families. Please help our children by contributing to the Council for Children with Behavioral Disorders Foundation. Working together, we can make a difference. I am a firm believer that our aspirations for today's kids can be achieved. It takes a well thought out game plan, including managing behavior and teaching social skills. Never give up hope. Be patient. Thank you.